I thought about it this week. I said, what would be if, if this was the last, mm -hmm. uh, being in eighth place might not be in a fall brawl. Uh, that's okay. It's not, it's, it's okay. But this might be the last devotional that I ever do uh, here. And I said, I'm going to keep it very simple and straight to the point. And uh, a verse that you're all familiar with is John 3.16. The Bible says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. I thought about it through the years, and I thought about this this uh, club and things like that, and with a group this side, it's a very good chance that there may be a handful of men here that's not ready to meet the Lord. And I don't know your heart. The only person out here that I know saved is me. That's the Amen. only person. I believe John is saved. I believe David's saved. I've heard their testimonies. You know, I understand. I could go through here and I say, I believe Boo's saved. I've heard his testimony. Some of you I've never heard, you know, a personal testimony of when you came to know Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior. I have. I know beyond a shadow of a doubt that I'm saved and ready to meet the Lord. Amen. In John 3, 16, there's three things I want to draw your attention to today. Number one, God's grace. For God so loved the world. Over here in Burkeville, there are people that are incarcerated for child pornography, child molestation, child abuse. To me, that's one of the most wicked things that a person can do is to molest a child. Mm. But God loves them. That's right. I don't. You understand where I'm coming from? It's hard to love somebody like that. Now, I would go in there, and I would preach to them. I would tell them about Christ. But to be honest with you, it makes me sick to think about what they did to somebody's kid, if not their own child. It's pretty bad. I would have a hard time loving that person. But God loves them. And if God loves them, he loves you. No matter what you have done, and everybody out here has secret sins. That's right. <clears throat> you have stuff that you would never want to be put up on a screen, and I do too. Thoughts. Things that maybe you did when you were younger in the dark. You know what I'm talking about. Stuff that you have said, places you have gone. There's things that we have done we wouldn't want nobody to know about. Matter of fact, we would love to just erase them out of our minds. Right. But they're there. God still loved Bruce Ruth. So when I say God's grace, for him to love the world, that's grace. That is the unmerited favor of God. And his mercy is not mentioned in the verse, but we can talk about God's mercy. That is not getting what we deserve. We deserve to be in hell today. That's exactly where I deserve to go. Thank God I'm not because of his grace. The second thing says, for God so loved the world that he gave. We see God's grace, we see God's gift. He gave his only begotten son. What more can you get? How many of you have a son? Would you give him for me? No way, right. I wouldn't <clears throat> give my son for anybody out here. But God gave his only begotten son for the pedophile, for the murderer, for the rapist, and for you and me. Mm -hmm. Folks, I can tell you right now, that's a gift. That's a gift. You can't earn it. You can't purchase it. You can't do nothing to obtain it. It's a gift. It's simply to receive. We're talking about the world that he gave his only begotten son. There's nobody else that he could have given. He gave himself. And I thank God for Jesus Christ. It's not Muhammad. It's not Allah. It's not the Catholic Church. It's not the Baptist Church. That's right. It's not the Independent Baptist That's Church. Right. It's not your good works and good deeds. They're filthy rags in the sight of God. God gave his son for you and for me and for the pedophile that we would never even want to look at. He gave his son for them. For God so loved the world, that's his grace. That he gave his only begotten son, that's his gift. But notice his guarantee, that whosoever 
believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. When you reach down to grab that fish today, I want you to think about the water that you touch. In Luke 16, the rich man died. One of the first things that he discovered in hell, number one, there was no exit. He never asked to leave. He knew his eternal destiny was sealed. But he asked for water. Just give me one drop of water. And today you'll reach it, reach down and grab a fish. You'll be all over the water today. You'll be drinking water. There's people in hell right now that would give anything for that right there. Just one little drop of water to cool my tongue, for I am tormented in this flame. And there's another statement that I, rings in my mind. One word says, remember. Remember. That's what Abraham said to him, remember. And ladies and gentlemen, ladies here, but men today, I can tell you right now, you will remember this day. If you die without Jesus Christ, it will be your fault. It will not be this club's fault. It will not be my fault. It will not be anybody that's ever told you about Christ and prayed for you's fault. It will be your fault. When you close your eyes in death, I want you to think about this. You will remember what Bruce Ruth said on this day and what other devotions have been stated, that you will remember this day forever, and not just this one, but forever. Could you imagine? I'm standing on a bank at Fort Pickett. We're fixing to go fishing. Here's a guy that I don't know very well, but here's a guy telling me about Jesus Christ. And I've known about it, and I've heard about him, but I've ignored it and I've shoved it and I've pushed it away and I'm going to do my own thing. <coughs> then you go to hell, not just for a thousand years, not just for 10,000 years, not for a million years, but forever and ever and ever thinking about missed opportunities. You will remember. Them. You will remember a moment like this. You will remember times that maybe somebody else spoke to you about Christ. So God gives us a guarantee that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Do you know him as your personal Lord and Savior today? You can fool us. You'll never fool God. Never. If we don't catch a fish today, we all come in here with empty nets. It's not a big deal. But if you die without Christ, it's a big deal. Please, you don't have to. If God has spoken to your heart, or if he speaks to your heart next week, it is his mercy, it is his grace to reach down to where you are and call you unto himself, because that's exactly what he did for me. He came to where I was. And he says, Bruce, this is your last chance. And that day, August 11, 1987, in Halifax, Virginia, is when I gave my life to Jesus Christ, and I've never one second regretted it. Is the Christian life easy? Absolutely not. It's not easy. But it's the best life. Amen. It's the best life. Because I can lay my head down at night and have peace that if this old ticker stops, I'm going to be absent from the body and present with the Lord. And you can have that guarantee as well. If you'll believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, not from here, but from here. Someone has sung a song or wrote a poem or something 18 inches from hell. It's from here to here. It's from your mind to your heart. I had it here for 21 years. I knew everything, a lot of things about the Bible, about salvation, but I finally got it here. And that made all the difference in the world. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, Lord, we come to you this morning in the wonderful, precious, and lovely name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Lord, I want to say thank you for a beautiful day that you've given to us, health and strength. Thank you, Lord, for the privilege we have today to gather here on the bank at Fort Pickett. And Lord, I just pray, Lord, I know that your word is powerful. Lord, it may be a verse, Lord, that is so simple that we've heard from our youth up that you love the world, that you gave your only begotten Son, that you offer eternal life. And Lord, we thank you so much for what you've done through Jesus Christ. 
And dear God, I ask you, and I plead with you one more time, that Father, if anybody here today has never been born again, they've never trusted Jesus Christ to be their Savior, to forgive them of their sins, I pray that your mighty Holy Spirit, and Lord, if you don't do the work, it won't get done. Lord, we need, we need your Holy Spirit to prick the hearts of any man here that's lost without Christ. Please have mercy on them. And Lord, we just want to say thank you for another day. Thank you for what Jesus has done. Keep us safe on the water today. I pray you'll bless the ladies and all those who make preparations later on. We pray, Lord, for a good and successful and uh, safe day. Leading God today, working hearts. Thank you for the privilege to be here this morning. In Jesus' wonderful name we pray. Amen. Amen. Amen.